my channel my name is Brittany and today's video is one of my most highly requested videos it's gonna be about the Air Force or the military HPSP or the health profession scholarship program for those of you who don't know I am now a second lieutenant in the Air Force and I joined through the HPSP scholarship program and I get a lot of questions every day about why join the HPSP how do you join the HPSP what exactly is it and anything you can think of i get those questions all the time so i'm finally sitting down to record this video for you all to let you all know anything that you need to know about the hpsp and again i'm air force hpsp so my perspective is based solely on my branch i'm not sure how other branches do things or you know what they offer from my understanding it's pretty similar but there are differences between each branch that offers this scholarship program so um, I'm just going to be talking from my, pers my perspective of being in the Air Force HPSP. Yeah, so let's get right into it. So the first question is, what is the HPSP scholarship program? So as I said, it is the Health Profession Scholarship Program. And basically what this is, is a scholarship for anyone who is going into medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, nursing school, any allied health profession, the military will offer you a scholarship to pay your tuition and to pay you while you're in school in exchange for service once you're finished with your degree. So for example, I'm in medical school. Once I was accepted to medical school, I received, I applied to receive the scholarship. And now that I'm in medical school, the Air Force pays my tuition. They pay me while I'm in school, so they pay me, me a, a nice stipend. Usually it's around like $2,000 a month. And they also pay for like any fees that I have, my books, my health insurance, everything that you can think of is covered. So that allows me to focus on making the most out of my learning experience and not having to worry about the financial aspect of it. Now, once I'm finished with medical school, what will happen is I will go to residency, hopefully prayerfully, a military residency. And then once I'm finished with my residency, I will go to serve my, my service commitment with the Air Force. So another great thing about the scholarship program is that some branches offer a signing bonus of about ten to $20,000. It all depends on the branch and the time of year, but that is a huge huge uh like a bonus you know if it's especially if this is something that you know you already want to do who doesn't want an additional ten twenty thousand dollars to hit their bank account so what is the service commitment so there are two three and four year service commitments and basically it's a year for year obligation so for every year that the military pays for your education you owe them a year of service so if they pay for two years of your education then you owe them two years of service if they pay for four years of your education then they then you owe them four years of service so you pay back this time once you finished residency and you're ready to work as an attending that's when you you serve your time commitment so don't think oh they're gonna pay for medical school and then I'm gonna do a four-year military residency and then I'm done with my service commitment that's not how it works in fact how it works is if you do a military residency then that time counts towards your retirement time so let's say you know they pay for four years of my medical school and then I decide to do an OBGYN residency for four years but I go military residency instead of civilian residency that four years is now going to count towards my 20 years of or 20 21 years for my retirement so I'll have four years from residency and then I'll have four years from my active duty service obligation or service commitment. So that'll put me in, I'll have eight years total towards my military retirement. So that's a common question that I get is, you know, once I'm finished with residency, is my commitment over? No, <laughs> no. What are the requirements for the HPSP scholarship? First and foremost, you must be a US citizen that's currently enrolled or accepted into a US accredited medical school or nursing school or dental school or pharmacy school whatever your allied health profession is you have to have that acceptance or you have to be currently enrolled you also have to have a certain GPA and a certain um, test scores and leadership experience and that varies from branch to branch so if you're interested in 
the army or the navy or the air force you should look on their website to see what their specific requirements are you also need to be able to meet the physical standards of the military so height weight and then there's going to be like a physical fitness test that you need to pass in order to become an officer in the military next question is how do you apply for the hpsb scholarship so first and foremost you need to decide if you want to join the army if you want to join the navy and if you want to join the air force those are the only three branches that currently offer the hpsb scholarship program so once you decide which branch you want to join then your first step is to contact your local recruiter your local health profession scholarship program recruiter and then you talk to them you tell them that you're interested and then they'll get the application cycle started from there it's going to be a lot of paperwork that you're going to have to submit go back and forth you need to submit your grades you need to submit your test scores your resume all of your leadership experience like leadership is obviously very very big in the military because you're going to be an officer so you're going to be leading people so that's like very important so you should begin your application around the same time that you start your medical school application or your nursing school application i'm just going to talk about medical school because that's what i'm in so start your application for hpsb around the same time that you start your medical school application and ideally it should be no later than the fall before you start medical school now if you get past the preliminary interview process then your recruiter will schedule like a physical exam where you'll have to go to a doctor they'll have to you have to take a drug test you'll have to have a physical performed and all this just to make sure you meet like the, the height and the weight uh, standards and then once you get through that process and you're cleared and you don't have any health conditions you're in good health and there's nothing that's flagging you you will complete your application and that will go then your application will go before the selection committee and they will decide whether or not they're going to offer you a scholarship and hopefully they do so some of the factors that are really important for you to think about when you're for those of you who are interested in joining the HPSP program leadership activities grades test scores extracurricular activities your fitness all of these things are going to be taken into account when you go before the selection board and so it's good for you to you know try to get do the best you can in each of those areas so that you can give yourself the best shot at getting the scholarship now once you are accepted and you find out that you have been accepted and you got the scholarship and everything is great now your medical school is paid for and you're just like jumping for joy what's going to happen is you are going to be commissioned into the air force or to the navy or to the army and usually that happens either before you start medical school yeah i'm pretty sure it happens before you start medical school if you do the four-year scholarship and <clears throat> that's when you'll be sworn in as an officer into your respective branch and then you'll most likely go to officer training um, right before you start first year of medical school once you are in medical school your obligations for the military are kept at a at a minimum because they want your focus to mainly be on your academics on becoming the best doctor you can be so they're not trying to bombard you with a bunch of things that you need to uh, do while you're in school but there are a few things that you have to make sure you get done as part of your contract the first is commission officer training which I mentioned you would most likely do before you start medical school but in the chance that it does not work with your schedule then you will probably do that the summer before the summer between your first year and your second year of medical school and officer training is well when I went it was a five-week course in Montgomery Alabama which is pretty much a leadership course you learn how to be an officer in the military you learn about your branch you you learn about team building and missions and all of these things it like basically opened my eyes for someone who wasn't mili uh, wasn't prior military or isn't prior military it helped me gain the knowledge and the background of what it actually means to be in the military and then be an officer in the military 
Then for the Air Force, there's the Aerospace Medicine Program, which is a two-week course that they offer in Ohio that teaches you everything you need to know about aerospace medicine. And um, that is required for anyone who has a four-year scholarship and anyone who has a three-year scholarship, I believe it is optional for the Air Force. And I'm not sure if other branches offer that, same program but that's something that you can definitely look into if you're interested or just join the Air Force one of the last and very important obligations that you have while in medical school are your away rotations or you'll hear them called ADTs and or like your audition rotations so you are obligated to perform two away rotations is it two or it might just be at least one away rotation at a military base that you're interested in training at for residency but to be competitive i heard that you should at least do two like even though i think it's one is required you if you really want to match into a military residency then you should at least do two away rotations at bases that have your residency training program that you would see yourself living in so like i said just to sum it up you have commission officer training you have your aerospace medicine program course and then you have your away rotations those are your obligations while you're in medical school and obviously to get good grades and to do well so another question that i get is are you allowed to choose your specialty from what i know yes you are allowed to choose your specialty but you need to keep in mind that the needs of the military always come before your needs or your preferences it's mission first and if the military doesn't need, you know, let's say dermatologists, no offense to anyone who wants to be dermatologists out, out there. If you want to be a dermatologist, but the Air Force doesn't need dermatologists, then you may be asked to do a transition year not asked you may be forced into a transition year or you serve as a general medical officer prior to your residency so you would fulfill your obligation as a general medical officer and then you can go to residency once your service obligation is complete or you might go into a transition year and then have to reapply for the next year to join the next year's class so just keep in mind that it isn't guaranteed like it is in civilian world that you're definitely going to get your specialty well even in civilian world it's not really guaranteed because not there isn't a hundred percent match rate for every medical student into every residency program but that's something that you definitely have to pay attention to and you have to keep in mind as far as like how likely you will be deployed i think that varies by specialty and by the needs of your military branch or the Air Force at the time. So that's also something that you need to keep in mind. I think that it's important that if you're joining the military and through the scholarship program, that it's something that you want to do. It's not just for the money, that you are comfortable with not knowing where you're going to end up, when you're going to end up, and just embracing the process and, and recognizing that it's an opportunity that not everyone gets to have like the people that you meet the places that you go the impact that you'll make is going to be very unique in the military realm versus the civilian world references to those so i think it's important for anyone who's considering going the hpsp route talk to as many people as possible it's important to talk to attendings it's important to talk to residents and h in in military programs it's important to talk to medical students who are in medical school now and in our hpsb students and obviously i'm glad you're watching this video because i'm one of them but then there's others who are army hpsb who might have more information or navy hpsb who might have more information and you know just keep an open mind it's important that you keep an open mind. This isn't for everyone. This isn't for everyone and that's okay. But the, the best advice I can give to you is just make an informed decision and do it for the right reasons so that you will be happy in the long run. And just remember the needs of the military always come before your needs and preferences. That's just what we're signing up for. I don't wanna scare anyone away 
but you do lose an element of control when you join the military. That's just a fact. Um, but I hope that you all found this video helpful. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at The Brittany Way. Make sure you click the link in the description box. I have a link to my blog, which has all of the information that I talked about in this video, plus more. Um, so definitely check out that blog. And if you love this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have, thanks for holding me down. And just remember guys, be you, stay true, always believe that you can do anything that you put your mind to. And remember, no bees, no honey. So keep the hive alive. Bye guys.